Hey guys, Britt Trees here from CCPIA, and today we are inspecting this recently closed commercial kitchen. So we'll start from top to bottom with the kitchen components. First of all, we're gonna take a look at the ceiling protection. It should be cleanable and fire safe. You can tell that by just taking a good look at the covering on all the ceiling tiles. If you look around this kitchen, there aren't barely any marks on the ceiling tiles. They're actually quite clean. There's a, there's a little bit of dust over there. That's about it. If you have a step ladder, you can lift this as well and take a look at the kind of material it's made of in the back. It gets a little loud here. And on the underside. Next, we'll move to the exhaust hood. First thing we want to look for with this exhaust hood is, does the hood cover all of the cooking area? Here we have a double stack convection oven. We've got a 10 burner range and a four burner low boiler, low boiler over here. The second thing we want to check for is, is the hood made of steel or stainless steel? Right here. Next, we want to make sure all the baffles, that would be the gated openings in the back of the hood, are they all properly installed and present? Later, we'll take one of these down and show you what's inside of them. The fourth thing we want to check for is, do the fan and the light operate? So here we'll test the light and the fan for this exhaust hood. This switch is labeled lights, as you can see, the lights don't turn on underneath the hood right now. The fan does. You feel the air moving there. You get sucked out. You feel the positive pressure from the makeup air that also turns on right here. So when the fan operates, you should be able to feel the negative pressure moving the, the grease-laden air out of the hood area, and you should feel somewhere in the space the makeup air turn on and create a positive pressure with fresh air. Also notice right here, we have our service label, and we have easy access to pull down one of the baffles in the back of the exhaust hood. So now we'll show you how to remove one of the baffles from the exhaust hood. Many of them come with handles. I'm going to lift up and slide it down. We'll take a look at this one over on the table. Here we have one of the exhaust hood baffles or grease filters that's been removed. You can look on the front and see some grease build up here, some dust. You can also look on the back and see what kind of grease buildup is down inside this filter. This was not the greasiest I've seen. We also could use some cleaning. Next, we'll look at the overhead fire protection that's installed inside this Type 1 exhaust hood. Each nozzle from the overhead fire protection should be centered on the cooking appliance. So here on this low boy, we've got four nozzles for four burners. Here in this range, however, we've got five nozzles for 10 burners, plus the nozzles aren't, aren't quite aligned on the burners, so we can write that up as a defect. Over here, underneath the baffles, we want to look for the grease trap. Should be installed just at the bottom of the grease filters. Here we'll take a closer look at the overhead fire protection nozzles over this low boiler. We want to be sure that each nozzle has a cap on it and that that cap is not clogged. This one's a little dirty. You can see a little grease build up on these, but I wouldn't say they're clogged. Obviously, you're not going to test them out. 
Here we have two more components for the commercial kitchen that are mounted quite close to each other and, and along the egress path. This is the manual actuation device or the pole alarm for the exhaust hood and its overhead fire protection. As you can see, it's properly labeled. Its conduit is, is safe and not damaged. We have a safety seal here that says seal do not remove. So it, it once used, it would need to be serviced again. We want to make sure this is not obstructed, maybe by this cooler or some other kind of storage, or if it was mounted underneath a countertop or something like that. It also must be 10 to 20 feet from the cooking area and 42 to 48 inches off the ground. The second component mounted here near the egress path, actually by this doorway back into the dining area, is this portable fire extinguisher. You want to verify that it's type K, which would be here on the label. You want to verify that it's serviced regularly. It must be mounted and easily accessible. For instance, it couldn't be blocked by this cooler right here or have storage all around it. Another detail with this portable fire protection or, or fire extinguisher that again is a type K, you want to verify that it's been serviced regularly. Just above the service tag, is actually the pressure gauge. A properly pressurized fire extinguisher will have a needle that's in the green. You know, that's an easy thing you can do to check actually any fire extinguisher that's installed in a commercial property. Here we have a component that must be installed in every commercial kitchen, the triple basin sink. It's also called the three compartment sink or just a dishwashing sink. Every commercial kitchen will be producing dirty dishes. So they need to be able to sanitize and clean them in order to use them again and again. One important component of such a sink would be a dedicated water heater. The water needs to be heated up higher than the rest of the fixtures in the commercial building. This hot water is needed to sanitize dirty dishes. We can look pretty safely on either side of this triple basin sink and, and see that there's not a dedicated water heater. So we would let the client know about that in the report. Another important feature of these kinds of sinks are the drains. It's a very common place to find plumbing leaks is beneath the dishwashing sink. You even have a pan right here already left, presumably for an existing leak. We would take a picture of that and note it in the report. You also can see all three drains coming out into a floor drain, which is proper. There must be an air gap between each one of these drains and the main plumbing drain in the floor. With the wall covering in a commercial kitchen, what we want to look for is that it's cleanable, non-porous, and it's fire safe. It doesn't need to be cut or broken or any part of the wall missing. If you look around this entire commercial kitchen area, all the walls are either this cleanable PVC-like plastic material, stainless steel, or their windows. That's, that's the entire kitchen envelope. You want to make sure that there's no dirt or visible soot or grease marks on the walls. Those things would be evidence of either a fire or a lack of cleaning. You'd write those up and put them in your report. Finally, we'll talk about the floor covering. Here we don't have covering so much as we just have a concrete slab. Having interviewed the owner earlier today, we learned that all this cutting up on the floor is actually quite visible. You can even still see some of the cutting marks, as well as the different colors of concrete use. We know that there was extensive plumbing work done to this location in order to open it. When you're looking at a commercial kitchen's flooring, you want to ask yourself, is this flooring safe for the employees? The employees are the people who are using the floor on a regular basis. Is this concrete a non-slip surface? That's probably up for debate. I would think that when this kitchen is steamy and potentially greasy, this is not a safe surface. What should be installed on top of these areas, wherever employees are using them, would be rubber mats. And then they would need to be picked up and cleaned nightly, as well as the floor underneath. When you're looking at flooring protection, you also want to be sure that your appliances are on wheels so you can move the appliances out and clean underneath every night. 
Another question you want to ask yourself with the commercial kitchen flooring is, is this surface porous or flammable? With concrete, the answer to both those questions is no. Is the covering dirty, wet, broken, or missing? If it was a tile floor or something like that, you might find broken tiles. Does the flooring pose a slipping hazard? Earlier, we noted that once this floor is potentially wet and greasy, that a concrete floor will absolutely pose a slipping hazard. We would write that up and put it in the report. Does the flooring pose a tripping hazard or any other kind of fire hazard? If there's anything in the, in the purview of the inspector that he feels is unsafe, he's, he's welcome and, and actually on his duty to be writing that up in his report. Just as a bonus, we'll take a look at this walk-in refrigerator freezer. Also, there's some storage areas inside. Here's your light. Here's your door latch. We're going to make sure none of this storage blocks either access out this door or creates any kind of other obstruction or unsafe situation inside this refrigerator freezer. Here we have what may have been the old light switch on the inside of the freezer. They need to reinstall this cover plate, so we would write that up as a defect. Here's your emergency release on the latch so you don't lock yourself in the freezer. It's a good idea to keep this door cracked open. 